If your friend wanted you to join them to explore the gates of hell underneath the catacombs, what would you do? In this how to beat video, we'll follow the characters, see if we can make better decisions, and ultimately attempt to beat the hell caves in as above, so below. If you think you have a better way, let me know in the comments. If you like these how to beat videos, consider subscribing. Before we ridicule the characters for being morons for the next 20 minutes, I want to say thank you to everyone for being a part of this channel. I love talking about this stuff and it's cool to see that so many other people do too. So yeah, thank you. Alright, let's get to it. We start out following a wannabe Laura Croft who trespasses into an Iranian cave in search of historical treasures. Apparently these treasures are worth dying for because the Iranian military is just about to demolish the cave she's going into. The timing works out though because in mere seconds she finds the lost satanic statue that her dad was looking for his entire life. She's forced to retreat when the demolition countdown starts. In her escape, she runs into a random dude hanging from the ceiling. It's pretty creepy. Before she can process what the fuck is going on, the cave starts exploding. Scarlet makes it out of the cave just in time, narrowly avoiding being buried alive. Everyone who hunts for Flamel's stone is crazy. They all wind up dead. Thanks for telling me that now. And if that's the case, why are you putting on open tours to what is essentially a map for finding the stone? How do you even know that everyone who chased Flamel's stone died? Have you already shown this map to a lot of other people which led them to their deaths? If so, why are you putting on open tours to it? Then again, if everyone looking for it is as reckless as Scarlet, I'm not sure it's a mystery why everyone's ending up dead. We cut over to a much more cheery Scarlet, being interviewed at an archaeological dig site in Paris. I guess seeing the apparition of a dead guy hanging from a cave ceiling where she found a mysterious satanic statue was something she didn't feel the need to reflect on at all. I'm gonna fast forward through a lot of Nicolas Cage national treasure shit here, but basically Scarlet is still hunting for the Philosopher's Stone, which is a mythical substance that was said to turn base metal into gold and grant humans immortality. From all the raging clues they have, they deduce where the stone might be. Naturally it's in a pretty inconvenient location. They just need to go down into the catacombs, hop over the off-limits barriers, crawl through some bone-filled corridors, and slip past the gates of hell without anyone noticing, then carefully snatch the stone while tossing a bag of sand in its place. Personally, if I was looking for the immortality stone, which our previous tour guide said is a death sentence, then I started seeing apparitions of dead people, and the next step in the journey was to enter the gates of hell, I think I'd take a knee, grab an eclair, and visit the Eiffel Tower instead. But Scarlet's not going to be phased by this. I mean, earlier she jumped into a cave that was about to be demolished in minutes. Scarlet and Benji, her cameraman, do some recon by joining a tour of the catacombs. Stop. This is the Empire of the Dead. A stranger that's kicking it in the catacombs overhears Scarlet and tells her about a group that can help them into the off-limits areas. Sounds legit. The tour guide distracts them by urging them to stay with the group, and when they look back, the guy had Jason borned out of there. In the time before they looked back, he definitely could have left through that right corridor, but he'd have to be really quick and sneaky, which is odd because he was originally just chilling with his Etch-a-Sketch. Even if I wanted to continue to find the stone, I don't think I'd want to take the advice of some sneaky strange dude in the catacombs. That sounds like a good way to get taken, and Benji doesn't seem to have a very particular set of skills needed for that situation. Getting outside help and leading an official expedition to find and excavate the Philosopher's Stone from deep inside the catacombs is unlikely to be approved. Going in secretly is their only real option. They hit up the club to find Papillon so we can help them enter the off-limits area. Uh, what's up with that chick? They must be handing out some good shit at the club. Okay, she's obviously infatuated with us, but why? No random girl at a club is gonna check you out like that unless you're Magic Mike. It's probably a good idea to keep an eye on your drink so you don't wake up in a bathtub with a kidney missing. Laura Croft finds her new tour guide to lead them into the gates of hell. 
Oh wait, she didn't mention that part to Papillon. Oh well. Only George, Benji, and Scarlet know that they're headed towards the mythological gates of hell. But Scarlet's the only one that's actually seen a ghost on her quest to find the stone. Nobody but Scarlet has any reason to believe that there might be terrible things awaiting them, and she might just think that her mind played tricks on her. Considering the stone and treasures would be a huge discovery, and there's not really a strong reason to believe they'll actually enter hell, calling off the hunt is not reasonable. It is dangerous though. While they prepare to enter the catacombs, Benji asks one of Poppy's team members a quick last minute question. Suxi, what are the dangers that we are facing when we go down there? If you run out of batteries with no flashlight, you will die. If you run out of water, if you get hurt. Oh, and there are also dangers like bodies, bats, rats, claustrophobia. Droning bugs. I'm glad safety is coming first. This stone has never been found, and I don't think anyone else is hot on Scarlet's trail. I think they can afford a few days to mull over the plan. No, I'm no less Stroud, but I'm known for my pro WikiHow survivor tips. Seriously though, this knowledge is 100% relevant to the crew's survival as you'll see later. The Paris Catacombs is a nearly 200 mile long maze of pitch black tunnels that are very easy to get lost in. In 2017, two teenagers got lost and it took a whole fire brigade and cataphile operation to rescue them three days later. Cataphiles are people that frequently explore the off-limits areas. Not to mention the cataphiles considered the area the teens got lost in to be a very touristy beginner's area. I know our crew only expects to be down there for a few hours, but with what they're doing, they could easily end up down there for multiple days if something goes wrong. Here's what I would bring. Obviously basic stuff like a first aid kit and extra food and water. Waterproof headlamps with spares and extra batteries. Miners lamps for a backup light and a heat source. A helmet is pretty much a no-brainer thermal blankets because at 55 degrees down there, it's cold enough to give you hypothermia if you're exposed for over a day or two. Wetsuits and goggles, waterproof boots and waterproof bags to hold their gear and spare dry clothes because they might have to go through tunnels that are flooded with freezing water. Freezing water pulls heat from your body 25 times faster than air, so if you don't stay dry, you're looking at hypothermia in hours instead of days. Abrasion resistant caving oversuits for crawling around. Since they'll probably need to go up or down shafts, bringing multiple ropes with harnesses and gloves as well as other proper cave repelling gear including ascenders, descenders, and rope protectors. The ropes need to be placed in waterproof bags because a wet rope can be 40-70% to 70 weaker and is much more likely to be sliced through by a jagged edge. And one of the more important ones is a guideline with line markers to know your way back, but also for rescue teams since you're going into an area that that's designed to not be found. It was designed years and years ago to be invisible. Other good precautions to take would include making sure everyone in the search group is aware of all the dangers and conditions. You can't have phobias of confined spaces, rats, or cobwebby bones because you can't exactly leave whenever you start feeling sick. I know they're trying to be secretive, but telling a trusted friend beforehand that you're going into the catacombs via this entrance and taking this route, as well as when you expect to be back, is always a really good idea. There's honestly so much more to cover. The the bigger point though is that after a couple hours of reading about cave exploration, I realized I don't know jack shit about cave exploration, and maybe I should just back off until I get the proper gear, training, and guide instead of grabbing some rope off the wall boondock saint style and jumping into an uncharted cave half cocked. You're also far from justice. An important rule that cataphiles state is to never trust anyone else unless you really know them well because you're basically at their mercy. Obviously, Scarlet Scarlet is breaking this rule by finding a guide in a nightclub. Scarlet's crew decides to ignore most of what I mentioned and hastily enter the catacombs with a bunch of strangers. George obviously has not learned anything from his time in a Turkish prison, which he was thrown into because of Scarlet's shenanigans. And Benji is naive enough to ignore George's warnings about how dangerous she is. Things quickly go south once they reach the secret catacomb entrance. I'm not going. <laughs> Yeah, the police wouldn't do that. It's illegal, but generally speaking, it's a slap on the wrist and a 60 euro fine. 
getting into a brawl with a cop and throwing smoke bombs at them probably is not wise, and they'll be unlikely to help you if you need to be rescued later. I'd just take the fine and come back later. All in all, it's a great way to start their expedition, panicked and stressed. His little brother drowned in a cave when they were young. What was that precaution about not entering caves with people that are afraid of them? I know they're forced to enter the catacombs, but generally you'd want to find a close exit to let this guy out first so he doesn't become a danger to the others. Something tells me they're going to force this guy to come with him into the uncharted cave network instead. Graffiti is one way to mark your way back, I guess, but yeah, basically they don't use any line markers like we talked about. Notice also how they don't have any proper shoes or clothing, considering they knew they were going to be wading through freezing cold water at the start of their trip. Probably should have worn boots. Yup. Oh shit, it's that creepy chick from the party. She is a freak. This is where the gloves and caving over suit would be helpful. They're really not prepared at all for the things they'd run into. I'm not climbing over bones. What the fuck did you think you were going to be doing when exploring the off-limits area of the catacombs? Again, nobody in this group is on the same page here. And here we encounter the classic shortcut mistake. Scarlet wants to save a few hours off the trip by taking an unknown route. Where do I remember this from? Oh yeah, the ritual. That didn't work out well for them. Is that hot? <laughs> I'm with the tour guide. A map doesn't tell you shit, and we know nothing about this tunnel. Urban legends and evil mythology aside, if the guide's friend, La Taupe, or whatever his name is, knew these tunnels like the back of his hand and he never returned from that tunnel, at the very least, it's just plain dangerous. Luckily, they follow Poppy's lead. First bones, now rats? Of course they brought a dude into the catacombs that is scared of bones, scared of rats, and can't find spaces. Good job, team. I like how George's brother died in a cave, and he isn't as panicky as Benji. But to be fair, the satanic cult chanting in the background is unnerving. God, why are they singing? Why are they singing this fucking song? Just tell them to shut the fuck up! Benji just nearly avoids becoming a permanent resident of the catacombs when the tunnel collapses behind him. The train really goes off the rails when they end up at a dead end, which was impossible according to Poppy, as he knows this area well. Since Benji caused the tunnel to collapse, the only way out now was the same evil tunnel they avoided earlier. Maybe Poppy just got turned around somehow, but continuing deeper into the collapsing off-limits area when you're already cut off from your exit route probably is not the smartest move. I'd call off the hunt right here. Since we would have told a friend where we're going and used line markers, we'd be here for half a day at most before getting rescued. You can come back later once the tunnel is cleared. Scarlet decides to boldly forge on through the evil tunnel, and immediately things get weird. They see Poppy's tag on the wall, but he swears he has never entered this place. He seems to be genuinely freaked out and not fucking with us. But then again, can we really trust the tour guide we met at a nightclub. Okay, how about no? Now I'd definitely go back and chill at the collapsed tunnel and wait for help. But since our protagonist did not let anyone know or use line markers, their only option is to push forward as it's unlikely anyone will find them for days. The weirdness continues when they find an old piano. George mentions that it's the same type of piano he had when he was a kid, except that the A4 key was dead. I feel like I should break out the banana split analogy from the Polaroid video. I don't know what we're up to. Maybe three scoops of get the fuck out ice cream? What do you guys think? Scarlet has the bright idea to keep moving forward despite all this creepy stuff happening. She runs off further into the tunnel by herself. I guess she really wanted to know who was calling? George was right, this chick is nuts. They chase after her and catch up once she finds the ringing phone. Poppy's tag showing up in unexplored tunnels is weird. The piano with the broken A4 key is highly coincidental and very spooky, but a phone ringing without any electricity? That's the first truly impossible thing Thing they've encountered. Scarlet answers the phone. Hello? Why won't you talk to me, Scarlet? 
I was expecting Samara to give her 7 days, but I'm pretty sure the guy on the other line is thinking more like today instead. The impossibility continues as the man knows it's Scarlet on the phone. I'd be back to the collapsed tunnel, line markers or not. Clearly the Gates of Hell was not just an urban legend. I'm just gonna cover a bunch of other warning signs that they blow past real quickly as there's literally too many. There's probably three banana splits worth of warnings before people start dying. All the previously mentioned stuff, plus finding a pissed off creepy Latop that teleports. Where is he? The ceiling cracking with loose stones falling on the ground. Oh, yeah. oh. Jesus, Jesus. Latop eerily saying that the only way out of the catacombs is to go further down. The only way out is down. Having to rappel down a well without proper gear or training. Also, they're not wearing gloves and they don't have proper descenders with auto stop mechanisms. And they're rappelling multiple untrained people down a well simultaneously. God damn Benji's a liability. Descenders would have prevented Benji from an uncontrolled fall, and the gloves would have prevented his hand from serious abrasions, and going one at a time would have prevented George from receiving Benji's diving hurricanrana. Everyone randomly going deaf. A demonic earthquake. A ghost child. Egyptian padlocks that kill you Indiana Jones style. You have to take the exact right stone from the exact right place or the ceiling will collapse on you and kill you. Great, so there's ancient booby traps too. They correctly solve the riddle which unlocks the Egyptian padlock revealing a secret passageway. Why the fuck are ancient civilizations so cryptic with these riddles? The winged vulture is the bright light in the seventh hour of the moonlight's gaze upon a virgin goat. My security questions are more like, what's your dog's name? An old dead guy in a tomb whose body has not rotted for some mysterious reason. But how is he not rotting? I have no idea. Having to cave dive in uncharted underwater catacomb tunnels with no gear. <gasps> Random treasures next to lit fires. Holy shit! Okay, that's 12 right there. I think by now you'd have ample evidence to suggest backing out of the evil tunnel and just waiting for someone to hopefully rescue you. You should be able to survive for long enough by drinking tunnel water and eating Benji. I'm sorry guys, but you should have known I'd bring up cannibalism. They find the Philosopher's Stone, but it too is booby-trapped. The ceiling collapses when Poppy's crew tries to jack the treasure. How has nobody been killed yet? It's honestly a miracle. Their luck has to be running out here. Also, this is why you'd want to be wearing a helmet. Any of those falling stones easily could have killed them. Suxi's arm did get smashed, but Scarlet applies some stone dust which magically heals it. Unfortunately, Latop was cut off from the group. They don't attempt a rescue for fear of risking further collapse. I feel sorry for Latop. That's the second time he was left behind by Poppy. Scarlet solves the most important riddle of the movie. As above, so below. Which reveals another secret passageway below them. They toss the rope down the shaft and make their descent. The rope grinding on the edge of the rock is not good. They need to use a rope protector to reduce friction between the rope and the jagged edge so the rope does not get sheared in half, leaving them stranded. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. That's the inscription over the gates of hell. Nothing has deterred the group thus far, and it's not like they have any other option at this point. It's like Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Except I think he was speaking metaphorically while they're literally going into hell. I think Churchill would have advised them to not enter literal hell since they have a choice. Dude, Benji bitched about rats, but when Scarlet mentions walking through the gates of hell, he doesn't voice any concern? Well, there's no backing out now as the entrance was sealed behind them. We should just keep moving. Okay, you've been saying that same stupid phrase this entire expedition, and each time things got markedly worse. They find Latop, only this time he was not as forgiving as the first time Poppy left him. <laughs> Scarlet tries shaving some stone dust on Asuxi's caved in face, which surprisingly didn't work. More red flags pop up like a random noose and a baby crying. Is somebody there? 
It was a baby crying. Are you expecting a response to your question? Not only that, but you're in hell and it's obviously a demonic apparition. Come on, man. Benji forgot his auto stop descender again and when the cult chick jump scares him, he falls to his death. This guy really sucks at repelling. We should keep moving. <sighs> George sees his deceased brother underwater and flips out trying to save him, but his ghost disappears. Hell puts on a little reunion for Poppy and his friend who he presumably killed in some accident. Poppy's not as lucky as George, and while screaming it wasn't his fault, he gets pulled into the burning car before it vanishes into thin air. I'm pretty sure he died because he didn't take extreme ownership over the accident. We have to keep going. Okay, Scarlett needs to stop watching motivational videos with Rocky Balboa. They keep moving forward because that's been working so well for them, and they run into the fucking Grim Reaper. Well, yeah, that's what you get for shining a flashlight in his face while he's trying to sleep. It's hard enough to catch some Z's with all the wall people moaning and whining. Zed's doing a fantastic job of keeping the main protagonist centered in frame. Excellent camera work. George gets his neck ripped open by the wall people, and Scarlet tries to use the immortality stone again, to no avail. For all the hype around this stone, it actually kinda sucks. George mutters something about vitriol, rectifying, hidden stones, I don't know, but Scarlet bolts off, leaving Zed holding a dirty shirt against George's open neck wound. Scarlet jukes one cave demon, brutally stiff arms another, bare handedly ascends the rope Benji fell from, traverses the pit of blood filled with creepy crawlers, slips past her own undead corpse hanging from the ceiling, and returns the ruby to its rightful place. This is like Hell's version of Ninja Warrior. The whole as above so below epiphany hits her. The devil just needed a hug to stop the violence, and the only thing she has to fear is fear itself. She returns to the hangman, which was actually her dad. She hugs him and makes amends, which resolves her inner conflict, ending the nightmare. Scarlet does some Trinity shit to bring back George. Where the stone failed, love prevailed. So deep. We have to jump. I was thinking more like go back to back, but sure, your mystical intuition seems to finally be paying off, so let's do it. Well, the catacombs do interconnect with the subway system in some areas. As much as I wanted this to happen, it didn't. They open a manhole cover and Scarlet pops out and gets run over by a truck. Joking again, but seriously, she exited feet first without checking if a car was coming. It easily could have happened. I'm honestly shocked that Zed didn't die. But like so many people mentioned in the comments of my previous videos, he was holding the main camera. The movie ends with Zed, George, and Scarlet all severely crippled with PTSD and survivor's guilt for the rest of their lives, but having learned a moral lesson about rectifying your sins. Let's recap whose lives we could have saved and whose death was inevitable. With the proper gear and training, I think that everyone could have survived. The most important thing they easily could have done is to use line markers and let a trusted person know where where they were going and when they should be back. These single-handedly would have enabled them to chill at the collapsed tunnel and wait for help. From the moment the tunnel collapsed behind Benji, all the way up to them passing through the gates of hell with the top fuck starting Suxi's head, they were given every warning and every chance to back out and wait for help. It became so obvious that they were going to get themselves killed that it almost seemed miraculous nobody had died up until that point. So Scarlet, George, Benji, Poppy, Suxi, and Zed would all survive. I don't know what the hell was wrong with Latop, but I'm pretty sure he was already dead. Overall, I'd say this situation was pretty beatable. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't follow your Laura Croft, Indiana Jones wannabe friends into the gates of hell.